Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I really want to focus on the different types of machine learning algorithms within machine learning. So before we get started, let's actually talk about what machine learning is. I think we can loosely define machine learning as either an algorithm or program that you built, which can solve a very specific problem exactly like how a human would. Now, there's actually a lot of different type of machine learning algorithms, but there's four overarching family types, as you can say, or four overarching categories of these machine learning algorithms. So the first one being supervised learning, the second being unsupervised learning, the third being self-supervised learning, and the last being reinforced learning. Now, obviously, as more research is being done into machine learning, we're probably going to see a lot more different types of uh, categories within this. But for now, these are the four main categories that are out there. Now, to be honest, most of the machine learning that we know or we have personally used, they all fall under supervised learning. In fact, most of the machine learning solutions which are out there, they are all supervised learning. And the, all, all the other three uh, types of machine learning algorithms, they are actually pretty new. In fact, uh, reinforcement learning is probably the newest type of machine learning algorithm out there. Uh, Google has actually built a program which plays the game Go even better than humans. And those, uh, that program actually makes use of reinforcement learning. In the future, we're probably going to see a lot more use for reinforcement learning, probably in self-driving cars and whatnot. But for now, most of the machine learning that is being used, they use uh, supervised learning. So let's actually start off and discuss what supervised learning is. So supervised learning, as the name suggests, makes use of a lot of human supervision. So for example, a supervised learning model would have a test case and a, a training case provided. So the training cases is when, you know, uh, the inputs and outputs are already mapped. So the model looks at the training case uh, scenario. It is trained on the training case scenario. And so it's able to learn from the training case, which is probably, uh, you know, classified by a human or some sort of code. So what happens is after it has been trained by the training cases, it then looks at the inputs from the test case and it tries to map it to the outputs in the test cases. So in supervised learning, what is really important to mention is that the type of outputs, it's already provided all the possibilities of outputs that are possible. They're already provided. Uh, it's already known. And also there is a training case for this supervised learning model. So that is the biggest difference between supervised learning and other types of learning out there. Now, let's let me actually break it down by actually giving you guys an example. For example, you have a uh, you have a data set with images of cats and dogs and you want to train a supervised learning model, which is going to be able to look at images of cats and dog, uh, dogs and correctly identify if the image that it's looking at is either a cat or a dog. So to, so to do so, what you would do is you would actually break your data set into both a training case and a test case a test data set. So in the training data set, what happens is you've already labeled the images. So if it's an image of a cat, it's already labeled as, you know, cat.png. And if it's an image of a dog, it's already labeled as dog.png. So the, the train, uh, so the supervised learning model is able to look at these images and know that, okay, it's looking at an image of a cat and a dog and whatnot. So it's trained on that. And what happens is it starts to learn from this training data set. And then it's going to look at the remaining half of the images in the test data set, which are unlabeled. So you haven't labeled them. It's going to look at those images and either predict if the, the image that it's looking at is that of a cat or a dog. So the outputs are known so that this algorithm can only predict either if it's a cat or a dog. It's not going to suddenly say that, OK, it's actually a frog, you know, so the outputs are known. It has a training data set, it's being trained and it's looking at the input and 
you know, classifying if it's either a cat or a dog. So this is actually a very basic example of supervised learning. Some of the most uh, common uses of supervised learning is actually image recognition, object detection, uh, classification issues, a lot of classification algorithms, they fall into supervised learning. So you can have a multiple of different classes. Obviously you can have more than just cats and dogs. You can have numerous different classes, but they all fall under supervised learning. Next up, we have unsupervised learning. Now, as the name suggests, it's unsupervised. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in supervised learning, we knew we had a set of uh, well-known outputs that we had to look out for. And also we had a training aspect to our model. So when it comes to unsupervised learning, we don't have any of that. So we don't exactly know the exact type of outputs we are looking for. And also there's no training aspect to unsupervised learning. So what, what exactly does it do? So basically it looks at a bunch of data that you have and actually tries to identify patterns. So unsupervised learning is able to identify and pull out patterns from your data that you might be looking for. So it's really useful, especially when it comes to data analytics. And interestingly enough, unsupervised learning is often like the first step before you actually move on to supervised learning. So what exactly does that mean? So unsupervised learning is actually used in data pre-processing before you actually use maybe a supervised learning algorithm. So unsupervised learning is actually able to process your data better. So you can easily feed it into maybe a supervised learning algorithm and it's much better to work with. To give you guys an example of uh, unsupervised learning algorithms, some of the most famous ones include clustering and reduction of dimensions. What exactly is reduction, dimensionality reduction? Well, let's say you're looking at a really big data set about houses. So it includes the price, the square footage, maybe even the facing, the location, and maybe hundred more types of, you know, types of data about houses. You don't exactly need all of them. So for example, if you're just trying to predict housing prices, you probably don't really need a lot of those type of data. So dimensionally, dimensionality reduction, what it does is it actually removes uh, these type of like data points, which you might actually not need. And that, uh, that helps to actually narrow down your data better to feed it probably into a supervised learning algorithm and make it more efficient. So unsupervised learning is often usually the first step and it's used in data pre-processing before you actually move on to maybe supervised learning. In self-supervised learning, which is the third form of machine learning algorithms, what happens is there is no human involvement involved. So you're not exactly uh, labeling the data for the model, but the model actually is able to label the data itself and then use those labels as outputs and able to do predictions based off of that. It's very similar to supervised learning, so it's really easy to confuse, but the, the aspect where in supervised learning you're actually providing the outputs, this in self-supervised learning is what the model is able to do. The last type of machine learning algorithms that we're gonna look at is reinforcement learning. Now, reinforcement learning is probably the most newest type of these machine learning algorithms out there and there's a lot of research that is being done on them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, future prospects and definitely a lot a lot of opportunities for use use cases for reinforcement learning in the future but as of now it's mainly used in a lot of gaming situations. So for example as I was saying you know Google has actually built a program which plays the game Go and that is based off of reinforcement learning. Now, obviously Go is not that complicated of a game, but let's compare it to a more complicated game like Dota. So OpenAI has actually built a bot based off of reinforcement learning, which plays the game Dota really well. In fact, it has actually went against one of the best teams in the world in Dota, OG, and has actually beat them as well. So this is really a, a definitely a huge win for machine learning and obviously reinforcement learning. In the future, we can definitely hope to see reinforcement learning, not just in the gaming sectors, but we can definitely hope to see them in more wide use case scenarios. For example, self-driving cars. 
So the way that reinforcement learning works is, is that there is an agent involved. So for example, the reinforcement learning model has an agent which is always constantly looking at gaining information from the environment that it's in and then making decisions based off of that to reach the goal that it's supposed to. So when it comes to playing a game for a reinforcement learning model, what it does is the agent is constantly making decisions in order to reach the highest possible score that it should. So that's basically how reinforcement learning works. On the topic of using reinforcement learning for self-driving cars, Amazon has actually released this thing called Speed Racer. I've actually talked about this in my past videos. So what Speed Racer is, is it's, it's essentially a virtual racing situation that, and you can actually program your racing car uh, using a reinforcement learning model. And you can actually compete with a bunch of people all over the world. So based off of this, we know there's a definitely a huge potential for a lot of these machine learning models. Obviously, majority of the machine learning solutions that we see these days, they are based off of supervised learning, but I think there is definitely a huge shift towards reinforcement learning. And I think we can definitely expect to see that in the next five years or so. Well, guys, I hope this video was helpful in identifying the different types of machine learning algorithms and giving you guys a basic understanding of what each one are and what kind of applications uh, that each of these algorithms are useful for. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have actually worked with any of these type of machine learning algorithms and hope this video was helpful and see you in my next video.